I made an appointment with Aaron and Leonard Goldberg one afternoon after work and went over with a bunch of ideas that, that they didn't like and they had some ideas that I didn't like. But Leonard had had an idea about these three women who wore leather whips and chains and worked down in the gutters and the alleys called the alley cats that had been turned down by every network. And I thought, hmm, wait a minute. I started walking around the room and I said, now what if these are three women who work for somebody that they, and I looked on Aaron's desk and there was the speakerphone. They never see because he always calls them. And his name is like I'm Harry and they're called Harry's and Aaron had an oil of three angels on his wall. Angels! And they do all these jobs and stuff. And about a year to the day later, we got the script. Call if you need us, huh? Kate had worked for Aaron, and she had a choice of all. She could play any of the characters she wanted. You heard that, Charlie? Everything, Sabrina. We changed it to Charlie's Angels, and uh, they originally had written Kelly for me, and I said, I don't want to be Kelly. I, I think I'd rather be Sabrina, so I got to be Sabrina. And then we found Farah, and then we found Jacqueline, and then we had a show. We had used Farrah Fawcett in a very small part in a movie before, so I had, had uh, I already knew Farrah, and of course I knew Kate Jackson. Farrah had a terrific sense of humor. Just sitting and talking with her, she's funny. Uh, Jackie was very sweet, very vulnerable. Kate's very strong, very bright. I just turned down the typewriter and let them start to talk, and I found that in any given scene, Kate would take command. Jackie would be very concerned that everything was going to turn out all right, and Farrah would have something funny to say, and that's how I wrote it. Why is it I suddenly feel like a Christian going into the arena? Now just be cool. It can't be that bad. Mm -mm. No worse than skydiving without a parachute. I think when the show got on the air, our own character came out in, our, in each girl's role. So I think we made it our own. It wasn't the description in the script. Sometimes we really felt like we had to work very hard to be these different girls and what each of us brought that was special and different. And through our personalities developing and thinking up things to do that would be part of who our characters were. In the beginning, everyone laughed and said, oh, please, um, you know, three beautiful women who are undercover uh, police, you know, chasing down a six foot four killer in three inch heels and you know it, it, so it, it was the brunt of many many jokes in the beginning well i suppose always woodville are you there there were three unusual and quite different ladies and the fact that they were beautiful and, and were good actresses, too, helped. Aaron Spelling used to get very annoyed with me. It was very difficult to keep them down and to not, not go overboard with dressing them. And he would call me from the projection room when he would see dailies and say, Nolan, why is Jacqueline Smith dressed like this? You know, and I'd say, well, <laughs> I'd say, she's supposed to be a policewoman. But uh, it, I, I had quite a bit of... Uh, of uh, freedom on the show and of course uh, you know the women had a great deal to say about what they were going to wear. Fair and I love clothes. Kate you know would have stood with a turtleneck behind the bar and never done a cost never done a fitting because that just wasn't in her character but Fair and I were spotting clothes all over town we want that and that and that. They sort of developed the things that they liked and the look they liked. Kate Jackson was always very comfortable in her black pants, a turtleneck sweater, and, and uh, uh, athletic shoes. Usually at the end of the show, I found a niche for myself behind the bar and had a Coca-Cola. And that was so I could wear my jeans and then whatever top, you know, I'd have on the top of a, some beautiful gown, but I had my jeans on. Farah was never a problem. She loved anything to do with fashion. And Jacqueline was pretty much the same way. We had maybe, you know, sometimes 10 changes over a show. And that women did tune in to see the fashion. And we were sort of like these Barbie dolls prancing around in pretty clothes. My thing was insignificant, except that it, uh, it caught the fancy of, uh, of the public. Aaron was very smart about that, spelling was. He, uh, he figured out that 
if it was this remote and mysterious kind of connection between the three girls and Charlie, that it would be better than having me on camera. The waters run deep in this case, angels, and I'm up to my hips right now. Here you are, Charlie. Bless you, my dear. Charlie's Angels was an immediate hit. It just hit the ground running. People were just like, wow, look, people with very few clothes on. And, and were, were hooked. All of a sudden, almost overnight, it became um, hysteria. I mean, it was just like an explosion. At first, it was like we were in the eye of the storm. We'd go to work, and the storm was happening out there. But when we had a chance to go out, it was amazing. The, clamor that was going on. It's like being at the crap table and suddenly the sevens have come off the dice and you just keep rolling and rolling and rolling. And I think that each of them understood it. One night we beat Gone with the Wind, which is my favorite movie of all time. And I thought, wow, you know, how could we do that? Also, Farrah just exploded. I mean, she became a national phenomenon to a large degree eclipsing the other two women. Farrah Fawcett was a cosmopolitan favorite. Francesco Scavullo, our photographer, was mad about her, and she was on the cover of Cosmopolitan, which was considered a great honor. We only photographed the most beautiful women in the world at their moment of perfection. There was something very magical about her, and it was almost like she became an icon without her even realizing it. Everything was Farrah, Farrah, her hair. Every woman in the country wanted Farrah Fawcett hair, and if they didn't have it, they wore a wig that looked like Farrah Fawcett. I mean, there were thousands of Farrah Fawcetts running around. The Farrah look was like, became part of society. You know what I mean? It was, it, all, it almost took on a life of its own, where Farrah didn't even matter anymore. It was the Farrah. It wasn't the Farrah Fawcett, it became the Farrah. I'm a wig stylist, and I've styled a lot of Farrah Fawcett wigs. Now, did you get a, a percentage of all those that were sold, or...? No, I nothing? never have it. I don't... I, there shouldn't be a Farrah Fawcett wig. <laughs> it's really simple, and everybody could do it. See, that was the neat thing about it. Everybody all over the world, all over the country, could do a Farrah. And we called it rich girl hair. <laughs> and even girl with skimpy poor girl hair could have rich girl hair if they did all the things that the angels were doing. Oh, I so badly wanted uh, Farrah Fawcett's hair, so badly. And when Cheryl Ladd took over from Farrah, I remember thinking that she just wasn't as good because she didn't have as big a flick. So many teenagers of my age had these terrible, choppy, layered, feather-come-mullet-cut idiot hairdressers who just butchered their hair because they were trying to look like Farrah. And if you go to Essex, where I'm from, you'll realise it never went out of fashion to have a nylon flicked hair. The way you create the fair look is basically long hair. You start, if it's all one length, it's long to here. So you decide on your length, you cut your length in. Spray it with hairspray. Now you cut your layers in, starting like the bridge of the nose, and you cut all the way down like that to this point. Very simple. You take a small section of hair. So it's one length, boom, cut like this. Then you would hold the hair up. Spray on some more hairspray. Cut like a half inch off the top, layer that out to release the weight. Then you start blowing it out. You leave it for approximately... Then I invented a method called blow curl, which is done with sort of a smaller brush. 30 seconds to a minute. Blow the hair out, take from the half, from the ends halfway up, set that around the brush, hold your blower on it. You release the flick, like so. Heat it up, put it in a pin, let it cool. Do the whole head like that, let it sit for like five, ten minutes. You then spray it again. Take the pins out, brush it out, and it creates the ferret. I was brought up on it, it's never done me any harm, and I shall flick forever. <laughs> <laughs>